All right, this is the third video of three on the Electro Voice RE20. In this video, I'm going to rebuild this disassembled mic and get it back to fully functioning and test it to make sure it works as it should. We've gone deep inside and done a very technical repair and um, let's see what happens when we put this thing back together. Okay, so that looks great. We have a phase plug that no longer moves. We can push on it and we can see that it's adhesed into place. And now we get the fun part of putting this thing back together. So the first thing we want to do is get this protective grill onto the diaphragm because um, we can't set the thing down on its face until we have done so. I'm going to tighten up these two little screws here. So the next thing we want to do is replace the foam that was in there that was rotted out. Now I just happen to have foam from another RE20 that I took out that was what they used. So this is um, what it looks like. It's kind of, you could just take a piece of fiberglass. This is a little coil. I've rolled up kind of some um, fiberglass, a little denser than that. I wouldn't say it's too critical, but you do want to put something in there. So I'm going to use this piece, but I would just get a little bit of, um, you know, you can kind of see that this is a little bit dense. Okay, so we're going to put this into the hole here. And it's a little more, um, actually it seems a little more absorptive than the foam that came out of here. Next, we're going to put in these um, screws here. And remember I said, these screws are magnetic and they want to go into, they're gonna want to go into the hole where the diaphragm is. So you don't really want that to happen. And this has glue around it, but I'm not gonna replace the glue. I lined this back up so the glue kind of lines up. We do want a good seal here, but I think that the old glue is soft enough and lined up to where it's not going to be leaking air. I'm pretty happy with that. Our next adventure, we're going to need to get the hot glue gun out. And we want to replace the almost lint-like airy fiberglass that went down this tube. Cool. Uh, we have the disc, which I never took off of the wires. Now this disc pretty much only goes on one way at this point because of the wires. Um, but you do want to put it back in the same and line that glue back up. And the wires do not cross over the tubes. So we're going to put this here. So we've got this plastic disc. We've remounted that exactly where it was in the same rotation, and it's pretty snug there. And it's going to be airtight, which is really what we're looking for. Um, but to hold it in place, uh, we use a hot glue gun. And we're just going to do a little squirt here. And we're not going to use a lot. We just need to hold this in place. Um, We definitely don't want to block any of the venting of the um, tubes there. All right. And we can just take a look at this. I've just put some dabs right on each side of the tube just to hold this in place. Great. Uh, we can pull these wires kind of out a bit, get them nice and clean. Let's get it foamed up. So I've got two types of foam here. These are speaker grill foam. Um, this one here, I'll get the light out. You can kind of see behind it. The, um, it's got a, a, a kind of a soft and finer mesh. And this foam here has got a much coarser mesh. Um, and I don't think it's that critical for the rebuild. It's going to be better than the rotting foam and they've changed the foam types over the years. Just getting something that's kind of close is going to be good enough. Uh, definitely open cell foam. Foam that when you grab it and you can breathe through it 
and you can feel your air blow through the foam. You do not want closed cell foam because that will alter the sound negatively. Um, so we'll go around this thing and measure it up. And for the length of the foam, we're going to want the foam to extend beyond the end of the capsule about a quarter of an inch. And on the back side, we're going to want it to be about flush with it. Cut it right about here. Now this foam is mainly just to keep debris from coming in the side, not be overly restrictive to the airflow. Hold This actually holds the capsule in place inside. So when it rots, it kind of floats around. When you put this capsule back in, these two vents, these two um, anti-proximity effect ports need to line up with these open slots on the side, not where it's blocked. Where it's blocked would be um, so, you know, we need the, the full airflow to get into those. So to get the foam on, now that we've cut the foam to size, we need to be able to put the capsule wrapped in the foam into the housing. In order to help us, what we'll do is we'll use a little hot glue and we're going to avoid putting any blockage where those side ports are. So we'll take and put a little hot glue right here. here and here and just spots around the outside and then we can roll this into the foam now we don't really need the hot glue on the top side because as we're pushing it in the uh, it just needs to hold the end that's far away as it's going in and we can trim off some extra foam here. So what we'll do is we've added the hot glue beads around the outside of that little perimeter there. And we're making sure that we have the tube shooting to the sides here. Nice where the air vents are. We'll hold this here and we should be able to slide this in. And slide this out. Make sure that the wires aren't getting mashed. And Boom. And it looks good. We can see that the foam is up here. We've got a little bit of the old foam I didn't clean out. We can see through. We don't have any um, silver that we can see. We've got a really good placement. And the foam is stretched out a little bit so we can trim off the stuff up top. And leave a little excess here. We don't, it's supposed to actually extend a little beyond the um, diaphragm and this looks great next we've got this crap to deal with in here um, let's get it out of here yuck all right now for this we have this other foam that's kind of a lower density foam and what we'll do is we'll cut a strip of it about an inch and a quarter wide. The diaphragm is really far back in an RE20. The capsule is way back here. And there's an inch or over an inch of foam before it gets to the capsule. And that again has to do with this battle against proximity. Now I'm gonna wind this very loosely. I don't want to crush any of this. I want it to be very open sounding. In fact, you can make it even spirally a little bit of air gaps in there too if you want to add, get a little more high frequency response in your microphone. The less foam here the better for the high frequencies. And we'll cut this off. Drop it in. There we've got our open cell foam. I can blow through it. I can feel air. It's very open sounding or open and we can screw this on. Cool, the top of our mic is done. Now we just gotta reassemble the bottom. We want to take these wires here, 
bring them back out. So there should be a blue, a black, and a ground coppery wire. I'm going to pull these back through. Here you can see the transformer and the capacitors and resistors that are involved with the high pass filter. No wires are pinched. Everything looks good. Our next adventure is to place the triangle. And in the triangle, there's a little hole, and that little hole goes near the copper wire there. So I'm going to put the tail down because I don't want to mash that um, crappy phone. I hate working on these mics. I really, there's so many wonderful mics that are based on fine mechanics and other things in rotted and foam. But they're beautiful sounding mics and their technology is unique. I mean, they really have this ability to circumvent the proximity effect. Uh, you see a lot of radio announcers use them. That way when they get real close, you can add a little low end, but not a lot. Um, they, you don't have to be pop filtered. It's just, a, it's just a, a really good design. For the ground screw here, we got to go through the, the eyelet, put this into place. And what I'm guessing is the actual ground wire is wrapped around the eyelet slightly. Um, and I'm guessing they're trying to form a little bit of an inductor here using this transformer wire. Okay, so we're going to wrap it around a couple times and then we're going to fold it over itself a few times and you don't need to be too perfect on this and then we're going to take that and we're going to put a sleeve over it just for looks okay so i wrapped it around put that back where it was uh, the same thing with these wires here the blue and the black so we're going to take those and we'll fold them over Fold them over again. And once they're folded over, we'll slip on this um, bit of plastic tubing. Um, yeah, it just doesn't feel like a clean build, you know, just with the, um, feels more like fixing a, a, a shoe rather than a high quality mic. All right. Everything's in. Um, the next adventure is let's solder those wires back and fire it up. The green will go here and the red will go here. Now, when they build these mics, they actually wrap the wire around the terminal several times and then solder it. And um, we don't need to do that. That's um, just overkill. It just makes it harder to work on. We're just going to... There's no reason to have it be that strong. The solder joint does not need to ex exceed the strength of the wire. It doesn't really give us any advantage. And again, you don't want to heat these tabs up too much. They will melt away. This is a fairly low melting point plastic. And the red one here. Wonderful. Uh, this has got a little notch here for this metal bit. Um, that's a newer development I have not seen before. Now, one thing we are going to be concerned about is there's going to be a screw that comes down the middle and goes in that hole. So we don't want these wires crossing over that. So we'll pull these out and make sure that they're clear. Line that up with its little notch. Yep. And find our... 964 screw and 964 Allen wrench. Great. Get that nice and snug. And now for the grand reveal let's go ahead and see if it works cool cool so 
Now that the mic is fixed and rebuilt, new foam and the little face plug is glued in place, let's give it a listen and compare it to the other two mics that work and um, that worked and see what we ended up with. All right, so let's start with the mic that we just worked on. All right, and here it is. This is the RE20 that's been repaired. Um, now these mics here, it should have that warm voice. Even if I move back off, hey, hey, all right, and we're still talking and we get up really close, it adds some low end, but not a tremendous amount. Um, hello, DB. Okay, let's try one of the other mics. Hey, hey, one, two. Hey, now this is the one with the collapsed diaphragm. And the foam is loose there. Um, but that's just the whole capsule rattling, rattling around, not the other phase plug um, piece. Hey, and you can hear it's got like this mid-range honk to it um, because the diaphragm is pushed down against the phase plug and it's not moving. Hey, hey, too, it sounds about right, but it's got that loose bit there. So, hey, 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 two, two, all right. So we can hear that little bit rattling. So this is a contender for being fixed. Should I decide to endeavor into it again? And then this other one didn't work at all. Um, I might have had enough of this stuff, but uh, maybe I'll dive in and end up with a pair of these things. Um, I hope you enjoyed the teardown and rebuild of an RE20, my least favorite mic to work on. All right, cool, cool. Thanks for hanging out, and um, I will have more videos soon.